All right, so we're just going to wait for some people to show up. And then we will do, we will do stuff. Come on, people. I, no viewers on right now. Hey, Michael, what's going on? You here to tie with us? So, and Mr. Snuffle off, I guess, me. Yeah. Hey, Mark, my man. Good to see you. You ready to do some tying? All right. Hey, everybody. So we're going to be getting started real soon. We're just kind of waiting for a few more of our, uh, our classmates to be joining us. Uh, we're going to be tying a, the micro stone which is that is a size 12 nymph and awesome mike you'll get there just stay tuned and we'll be doing this weekly and you can learn along the way with us so yeah the microstone size 12 uh perfect for just about anywhere that trout live uh stone flies are found in most trout creeks and they're just, it's a deadly pattern. Never have to worry about uh, what's in the creek. For whatever reason, trout just can't seem to keep their mouths off it. So the beginning of this pattern, simple. Get your thread onto the hook. Wind it all the way back to right where the bend starts. And there is lead wire in your kit. So you can choose whether to weight yours heavy or not. We're just gonna skip that step for now, but all you would need is like a maybe an inch section and wrap that around and push it up towards the head, towards the bead head, um, and then just kind of wrap down the wrap down the thread down over the over the lead. Um, so real quick, you know, you've got in your kit, you got biots for the tail and the antenna. We've got orange dubbing and this rusty red dubbing, which I'm super excited about. Uh, you got size 12 hooks. Uh, you got medium bead heads to match those. And you also got a pack of oh, 14 hooks and small bead heads to match those. But we're going to be using the mediums today just for ease and just because it's probably going to be easier for you guys to see as I tie. Uh, so, yep, once you've got your thread wound down on your hook, we're going, to do the, we're going to do a golden stone for this one. So I'm going to take out my orange biots. Um, you're really only going to need these little guys. I like to take them from the bottom down here. Uh, it's just easier to peel them off. So I kind of just peel them down off the stem. You've got your two biots there. And what I like to do is tie them in one at a time so I can make sure those tails poke out at the right way. I'm going to move you real quick just so you guys can get a closer view of the fly. So, yeah, so we're going to take our first biot towards myself. And I like to leave it out you know, maybe just like half the hook length out the back. So you can see the length there. We're gonna wrap this down. Leave that tag end for now. Then we're gonna take our second biot and do that on the other side so it spreads out like a fork off the back of the hook. And you want that one to match in length the first, so it looks even. 
So once you get those down, you know, take your handy dandy. These are my Loon razor scissors. We've got these on the site. They are fantastically sharp and are my go-to's in my tying kit. You can see how I trim that down real quick. And then we're just gonna kind of make sure those edges are wrapped down. Then we're gonna take our vinyl ribbing, wherever I put mine, there it is, this kind of copper brownish D-rib. I'm gonna take a, I don't know, I'm gonna leave it all together and then I'll trim it where I need. Get this out of this tiny little bag real quick. So welcome to all the new people stopping by. Good to have you. Welcome to Tie with Post Fly episode one. All right, so I'm taking this, this ribbing, this kind of soft rubber material, and all I'm gonna really do is just kind of put a little tag end down and then secure that to the hook with a couple little wraps. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my thread and wrap up, I don't know, probably about two thirds of the way up to the bead head, as you can see here, kind of comes in right about there. And then I like to wrap with my V-rib, I like to do something called counter wrapping, which is where you wrap in the opposite direction of the way you uh, move your bobbin hand and really all that does is just further help to secure the fly um, as well as the materials especially a stiffer material like this ribbing is um, that tends to kind of want to have a mind of its own so we're just gonna really quick you know wrap this all the way up you're really just creating that little that kind of little taper down the back of the fly because the bulk of it's gonna be right up here um, closer to the bead head. So we're up to that point. How's everybody doing? Are you matched up? Guys tying along with us. All right, so we've got, as you can see, we've got the vinyl ribbing up the body. And then after you've got this secured down, I like to give it a couple more wraps because this little top section is going to get covered up by our dubbing noodle anyway. And so the next step is you're going to take your, your back shield material or flashback or whatever you want to talk about or whatever you want to call it. So I'm going to go with gold because I'm feeling, I'm feeling gold today. Um, we're going with the gold and the stone fly, so it just you know seems appropriate. So what you're going to do is peel a little strip off that pad you got. And you want it facing, as you tie it in, you can see there's a silver side and a gold side. You want to see the silver side facing up the top of the hook. So when you wrap it over top, you get that, you get that gold material on the outside. So what I'm going to do is just real quick, a couple securing wraps. Bingo, bango, bongo. There we go. And then this is going to seem kind of weird, but we're going to wrap all the way up almost tight with the, with the bead. And what we're going to do is we're going to take two more of the, the orange goose biots. And I'm going to take these two, you know, another matching pair. Stoneflies have two and ten up front and two out the back. And so same kind of thing, you want them facing, you want them forking out from the bead head, kind of like as you would see bug antenna do. And this one, I, it doesn't need to stick out crazy far. I usually like, you know, just a little bit, maybe, maybe twice the distance of the bead head past the hook. Just gonna real quick. Secure that and this stuff will be you don't need to do a ton of securing wraps because this will get held down by the uh, The dubbing noodle we're gonna put in in a second So we're gonna take that Do the same thing again you want these to match in length 
See how that guy kind of ran away? What I'm going to do is just kind of gently guide the biot around the side to where I want it and then do a couple heavier securing wraps. And then I'm just going to take, again, handy dandy razor scissors, give them a little haircut, feather cut I should say. All right, and now we're ready to tie in our rubber legs real quick. So what I like to do with these, and this is a little trick I learned from one of my uh, one of my good buddies who's a far more accomplished fly tire than myself. I'm just gonna grab my where is that rubber legs? Here we go. This is a testament. Uh, always keep your fly tying materials in handy locations, otherwise they will disappear. Or just a word to the wise. So I'm gonna take these yellow barred silly legs and as you can see they already come paired up so we just need two so I'm gonna go these stripes are pretty regular so I'm gonna go one two oh, let me get it closer to the camera for you guys so you got one two three four five I'm gonna do five little increments and I'm gonna cut it at the fifth one from the tip So as you can see, after you separate your two, two legs, what we're going to do is I'm going to turn it sideways so you guys can see a little bit better. I apologize. Next time we're going to have a better camera set up. Um, so what I'm going to do is just kind of lay this in here. This is all going to get covered up by the dubbing noodle, so don't worry about it being super pretty. Or whatever but again kind of you want to make sure a couple wraps make sure those legs are on the side you know kind of perpendicular to the to the body and give that one two more wraps and then we're going to do the same on the opposite side so i got my second leg same thing, just kind of cut it like right in half. One, two, three, four. All right. So now as you guys can see, we can trim these to match and whatever, but you can see we've got the rubber legs out to the side and the biots in the front. So now what we're going to do is we're going to create something we like to call a dubbing noodle. And you're going to want to be, be aware of these front biots because they're going to want to try and run away. That's just normal. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of my orange dubbing. What we're going to do real quick is we're going to take just a little bit, just a little pinch. A lot of a little bit of dubbing goes a long, long, long way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it on my thread here like this. And all you're going to do is kind of hold it down at the bottom and kind of twist. You want to kind of get, get that material wrapped around that. Use the oil or sweat from your hands. I know that might sound gross to some of you. Take that. And we're going to wrap between the legs. And you can always add more dubbing, but trust me, when you put too much on, it's a little frustrating and difficult to manage. So again, take another little sparse, sparse clump of dubbing. We're just gonna noodle that right onto the right onto the thread. If you guys have any questions, please, please don't hesitate to shoot us a message or a comment, and I'm happy to answer any questions you guys have. So like I said, dubbing noodles tend to like to run away. So I'm gonna hold, I'm gonna hold the four legs and the antenna up ahead of the hook just so they stay out of the way of my dubbing noodle. Again, like I said, the rubber legs are gonna tend to run away. Just kind of a curse of working with that material. I'm gonna do a few more little wraps here. 
Just happy little wraps. There we go. So now you can see we got the legs. Trout love rubber legs. Little antenna out the front. Kind of the last step. Take your flashback over the top and at the same time, let me turn it sideways for you guys to be able to see. Pull that over and at the same time, I'm just gonna do, I'm gonna feed these back real quick just so I don't have to deal with them. And I'm not worried about trapping them up near the, head, the eye of the hook. So we're gonna pin these back. Take that right over the top. See so it lines right up with the, right with the back of it. And then we're gonna do just a couple wraps around the head to really secure Secure that flash back. Go slow, doesn't matter, doesn't need to be fast. Just make sure it's secure. All right. And then you're just gonna trim your flash back. Get low with it. Bada bing. Turn it. You know, now that it's a little bit more stable and kind of wrapped down, give it a couple nice, decent bit of securing wraps up there in the front. Then take your whip finisher. Whoop. Just like one. Make sure not to catch any of the legs. Two. Three. And then boink. Pull it down. There you go. Now yours doesn't have to be perfect. Predatory fish don't eat perfect bait. They like to go for the weak and the injured. So you can trim up. As you can see, you know, you've got the legs here, the antenna, the tail. You can trim up as much as you like. If you want a shorter leg, longer leg, um, whatever you find the stoneflies in your creek look like. Uh, sometimes they have, you know, it, it varies creek to creek. But that is the micro golden stone and we'll do another one for for everybody who's just joining us um but yeah super deadly pattern uh, especially this time of the year in the fall the golden stones tend to get a little bit more active as the weather cools down uh like i said fish this i use this as a searching pattern every trip uh i'll throw it on my nymphing rig or under an indicator or even under a dry fly um, and it's just a quick way. Most trout won't pass up a chance to eat one of these things. So it's, it's a great play, way to survey new water um, or when you approach a hole just to kind of have a little micro stone like this ready to go. I've caught everything from smallmouth, wild brookies, stocked trout, steelhead up in the Great Lakes, everything on this fly. It's, it's ridiculously effective. All right, so we're going to start on our next one here. We're just going to do one more, and then uh, Pete next to me is going to do what we like to call remix fly, which is where we take what's in the pack, in the fly pack, and we tie something new that's not, that's not intended. But that's kind of the fun part about fly tying is, you know, you can follow the rules or you can make the next greatest pattern that you've ever seen. Following the rules is no fun. Yep. All right. So real quick, close up. Oh, still getting used to this camera thing. So you can see the flashback, you can see the legs, the dubbing, the ribbing there on the tail, those two biots. I don't know. If I was a trout, I'd eat this. All right, next victim. How's everybody doing? Let's liven it up in the comments section. What's everybody fishing for this weekend on the holiday weekend? Yeah, what are you guys using your extra day for? I personally am going to be chasing some uh, tailwaters trout down in uh, western Maryland. I think Pete here is probably going for... I am going to be at Smoney Nose Brewery in Hampton, New Hampshire, repping post fly, blade rods, and the fly shop, actually. Yeah, and... so if you're up in New England, come meet, meet Pete at the uh, Smutty Nose event. If you look it up, it's on our Facebook page. It's going to be a great time. Unfortunately, I won't be there. Free entry. Free entry. I've heard the beer's pretty solid. Yep. Um, and, you know, you get to hang out with Pete. Yep. Cast some rods. Check out some new goods. 
All right, everybody. Yeah, we'll be unveiling our new rod rack that will be showing up all over the world, hopefully, eventually. The rod rack you will eventually own. Yeah. I think don't don't sue us, Thomas and Thomas. I'm sorry. <laughs> Michael LeBlanc, Sprayder. Mark, what's going on? Talk to me, buddy. I'm getting lonely up here. Nope. Nope, just 10 people. Hey, 10 people, speak up. See what you guys are thinking about, talking about. Where are you guys fishing? What do you like to fish for? Let's get it up in the comment section. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, we're gonna have a great, great, like I said, this pattern just oldie but goodie, never seems to fail. Again, so wrapping all the way back, ah, to avoid that, don't be me. Wrapping all the way back to right where the bend of the hook starts. So that's typically like on most hooks is right about above the bar, right in front of the barb. I don't know if you can see this, so we should hire Viz line. There you go. So you can see where I'm ending that tie it is like right about there, just as that hook shank starts to bend back. I'm gonna trim off my thread. I don't need that anymore. All right. So as you guys remember, I'm gonna get biots. Like I said, I like to peel them down off the bottom. They seem to be a little bit more willing to come off clean down there. And you can use goose or turkey. Uh, I think there's duck buyouts as well. Doesn't really, doesn't really matter. You just kind of want that stiff, stiff feather that's going to hold its shape in the water. So again, you know, taking that, like I said, pretty much just like the length of the hook point. You don't need a whole lot. The distance back there. So I'm gonna one, two, three. You just really want to trap down that material. It'll save you money on uh, on thread and on uh, other things in time. So again, I'm just going to match this up. So there we go. That looks about right, don't you think? Again, one, two, three. There's a little fourth one for good measure. So that's all you really need. It doesn't take much to really trap down, trap down these feathers. You don't have to really crank on your thread either. Um, and then again, you know, real quick, trim it down pretty close. And what I like to do with these little tag ends is just do a couple more wraps to really make sure that's secure. Boop, boop. All right, those of you who stayed with us, you remember now it's time for the vinyl ribbing. Which is right here. You know, this kind of stringy, squishy stuff. Trout love it. I tie a couple caddis patterns with it in a different color. Uh, I really like the way it, it just gives it kind of that gummy, like grubby feeling um, to the fish and, and in the water it looks the same. It just really makes it really cool looking flies. So I'm gonna trap that down. I'm gonna take my scissors here and we're gonna trim up that. That would super sharp scissors not being sharp enough for me today. There you go. These things have seen a lot of bucktail. So again, like I said, we're just gonna wrap all the way forward until about, you know, Right about there, give yourself a decent bit of room to uh, to work with your dub and noodle and tying the legs and the other biots and stuff. And So again, I'm gonna counter wrap this. I'm gonna tie this in and wrap it in the opposite direction of the way I wrap my thread. Um, and really what that does, just again, just helps to keep this material secure against the hook and also just makes it way easier when you're, you know, you come over here. I just like to take my bobbin around once, around twice, and then on the third time, I'll bring it in, 
couple trapping wraps, no pun intended. And then, you know, we'll trim this ribbing here. Back, 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 make sure that's secure. And then, as you remember, we're gonna wrap forward real quick and tie in these other biots real fast. Same thing. I like to peel two off the bottom of that. Whoop. There you go, got our two biots. Gonna take these, again, you want them perpendicular out like a V, like the antenna on the stone fly. One wrap, two wrap, three wrap. Again, you don't really need more than three. Let me go to the other side. Play this baby down. If you're left-handed, you're gonna do it opposite the way I am. Boom, two. Three, face it back right side up. And then I'm gonna come in here again with my scissors, trim up these tag ends. All right, now we're gonna to get to the flashback, then the legs, and then last but not least, the dubbing noodle. So again, you're gonna to wanna to take this little foil piece that you got in your pack, Use your nail to separate one of those, one of these little strips. Uh, again, you want to do, as you're tying it, you want to make sure the silver side is facing up so that when you come over top of the noodle, the gold is facing out. All right, so I'm getting this laid down. All right, so let's get our legs ready again. So let's just use that five rule again. So we're gonna take, as you can see, ah, go. Got one, two, three, four, five. I'm gonna cut at this fifth one here. It's just an easy way to keep everything measured. Keep everything even. Drop my scissors. All right, so again, separate the rubber legs, boom, two rubber legs. All right, again, these, wanna, these are going to want to be perpendicular to the body, just like the biots, or perpendicular to the hook point, I'm sorry. And again, like I said, you only need like one, two, three wraps, really. doesn't take much to trap down this squishy squishy rubber and I'm gonna do that on the same side over here and just kind of use the way the rubber naturally curves as a reference just keeps it kind of simple two three four for good measure pull that over and all we're gonna do is get you know what this one we'll do the I'm gonna do the darker brown dub on this one. All right. I'm going to take, take in this much dubbing. Get a nice healthy noodle going again. Some guys take their fingers and rub them on their forehead, get a little oil and that'll help the dubbing, you'll better grip the dubbing and also better get it stuck to the thread that way. It just helps it behave a little bit better. You know, we're just gonna take, if it starts separating from your line, just twist it a few more times. Do one between the legs. We're just gonna keep, you know, you can tighten it up as you see fit. Um, See this? You guys can see this rubber leg isn't behaving properly. We gotta give, show them the business. Like I said, two, three. That's about enough. Like I said, if you have too much dubbing, you can always just pull down 
on the stuff that's already tied in. It'll come loose. And then just kind of work it off your thread. And then just like we did on the last one, work your 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 thread right behind, right up behind the bead head there. And then kind of as the last step, again, pull that bot, that flashback over. Stand in front of the biots and the rubber legs. And then once you've got that going, then I just kind of take it up so I can look straight down at it. Make sure everything is right. And again, kind of that little trick I said earlier. Just push, hold everything back real quick. Put in a decent amount of trap wraps. I just like to do this really until I feel the hook, the bead head kind of snug up and then all you're really gonna do after that is take your scissors trim your flashback whip finish and you're ready to go same thing super it looks really complicated but just like with a lot of things in fly tying it really isn't uh, you just got to take it step by step I'm gonna wrap that down oh, slipped out there boink Pull that in. Um, if you wanted to and you had it, you could use a little bit of head cement just to secure that wrap. What I would probably do is put it over top of the shiny stuff, um, the flashback, and that way it won't, um, it'll number one, amplify the flash and also kind of not look weird in the dubbing. But you know what? There's number two. The antenna's messed up, but that's okay. I'm learning this pattern along with you guys. And there you go. That's the micro stone. All right, so I'm going to hand it off to Pete real quick, and he's going to do our remix fly. All right, everybody say what's up to Pete. What's going on, guys? Today we're going to tie a kind of homemade October-ish caddis pattern with literally everything that was in this exact same kit. You're going to have your brown dubbing, the gold dubbing, the rubber, and then the brown biots. So we're going to start a thread base right behind the bead. Trim off the excess. Take your rubber tubing. Tie it in behind the bead. Work back towards the bend of the hook. We're a little late on the October caddis tie now that we've moved on to the next month, but still will be effective. I fished those oh, all yeah. the way up until I stopped seeing caddis on the water, which is probably like mid-November mid to late November, depending on where you live. If you're down in Pennsylvania, they'll stay away, stay around that long, even further south. Yep. Um, I mean, these caddis are just constant hatches. And uh, I know in parts of the, the southeast, especially in the tailwaters region of, like, Tennessee. Yep. Start making your wraps, heading back up towards the bead. It's almost identical to Stonefly. Don't mind me, I sound a little weird. I got a mega cold that's running through the shop. Yeah, I fear for my life. I would. I would. So, Pete, what are you fishing for this weekend? I am fishing for, hopefully, anything. I hope to find some time to go out. Hopefully, uh, Saturday I'll be here, and then hopefully I'm going to sneak out and catch some fall run stripers is the plan that is the plan striper striper season is uh sadly it's about over about over but that means just two more weeks of sleeplessness yep and then trout season which i'm also very excited for
As you can tell, my scissors are even more dull than yours. Thank you. These are Pete's scissors. We're putting those way up there. Yeah. I'm take my stuff. Yeah, this thing's gnarly. Your scissors back. All right. Now we're going to take your gold dubbing. And like he said, a tiny bit will go a long way when making noodles, especially with uh, a more synthetic base. I find much harder to make a noodle than natural. Let's put a little bit on there. We're going to make a collar. Then we'll take our biots, pick two good ones. They don't have to be monstrous long ones. Make some wing casings coming off the back there. And I always do a loose wrap and then followed by a tight one to cinch it down. That one's not good. There's a beautiful one. All right, and then our second wing. Couple of wraps to lock them in. So these wings, what are they? What are they supposed to emulate on that on that nymph? Emerging, okay. coming out of the shock. So what does that mean? As they travel up, they ride um, an air bubble heading to the surface, and then once they get to the surface, they start to fight their way out of the surface of the water, so they can become a dun, and then start drying their wings for takeoff. Awesome. So the, those wings are like kind of the emergence of that. Exactly. Of the wing structure out of yep. the fly. And trout really key in on that. You also got a, um, your buyouts ran away there. Oh, uh, look at that. So again, just be gentle. Pete might want to use a little bit more tension on that. Don't be afraid to manhandle some of these, some of these uh, materials. You'd be surprised. I mean, don't go crazy, but you can grip them pretty strong and move, manipulate them around the hook pretty well. All right. Now we're going to do a dubbing noodle. This is a little guy. So hook down in the center, bring it back up, and I twist around the loop I made twice. And then make a couple wraps, working back over the loop you just made. Then, so you can see better, take your fingers, split that loop open. Now you feed your dubbing into it. How do you want that dubbing spread out, Pete? I kind of, I honestly don't pay that much attention to it. I just flatten it out. See? Yep. Make it nice and flat. Feed it up in there because you're going to lose a lot of it if you brush or when you rub your fingers over it after the end. And any dubbing you leave on the, uh, the tying room floor, you can always pick back up, put back into another pack and use again. Yep. Even if it's bunched up, just kind of keep it, keep recycling it. Now Mix gonna... and match. Yep. Now we're going to give her a spin. All right, move that out of the way. Bring her around. And what I do while I do this is I work everything back so it's all facing one direction. Is there a name for that, Pete? I believe it's called palmering. Yes. Well, palmering is connecting wraps. I always read that palmering was just as you wrap it, pushing it back, pushing it back, pushing it back, making sure it gets that nice laid back texture. Hmm. Well, that's what I love about fly tying is everything's just a little bit 
different. All right, now you tie in your loop. Cut it. Grab your dubbing brush. Brush out all that extra. Give her a whip finish. I'm not gentle today. And this pattern is also really, really effective pretty much universally. There's some caddis or another in almost every creek. Even if it's a warm water creek, they're in there. Again, this is another great searching pattern. A great way to figure out if there's fish in that spot you're looking at. Um, I've, always, I've always found it effective to, I mean, if you walk up to a new stream or, or whatever, you know, have a couple patterns in your back pocket that you know work. Um, even if it's a black, all, the black woolly bugger, yep. an olive woolly bugger, uh, have those on your line ready to go because you can walk up to a spot and throw that and immediately start picking up fish and not have to change. Um, and just kind of, I call it a speculating rig. I've got something flashy up top. Usually try and mimic different nymphs. Um, so yep. I'll do like a stone fly and a caddis. Yep. Or maybe a... Uh, Cover your bases that way. You know, way. a mayfly, like some mayfly nymph and like a midge. Just something that you know most trout will try and eat. And once you kind of get that going, it's, it's you know, it's after that you kind of start dealing with colors yep. and figuring out what they're keyed in on. But really starting from a go-to, you know, it, it's really simple to, to pick out a couple go-to patterns and, and not have to worry when you walk up to that stretch that you're going you're gonna to try and catch fish. Another thing I found too is when you're trying new fly patterns, a good thing to do is to pick one pattern that you have confidence with, tie that on, and then on your trailing fly, make that your, you know, your new fly you're trying out, like one of these stone flies you haven't fished before, you know, because confidence plays a huge, you know, factor in catching fish. A lot of people don't oh, yeah. think that, but, you know, having confidence in your fly and your pattern is, affects how you fish unbelievably. Yep. Yep. I always, uh, yeah, fish with blind confidence until the sun goes down, and then yeah. you can look back at your at your steps and figure out what went wrong. <laughs> yeah. All right, guys. So those are our our two patterns for this week. Um, we're gonna follow pretty pretty similar structure yep. moving forward with these. So it's gonna be you know Sunday night. You'll get an email that'll announce what pattern we're tying. We'll announce it on social as well. And then you'll have an opportunity to buy it. If you buy it by about Monday at noon, we're able to get it to you by tonight or by Thursday. Um, and we also have a discount code that's special for this tying event today. Yep. It'll run till Sunday when the next email's sent out. Uh, it's called tie. It's spelled tie with post fly. Ten. Spelled ten. Yep. Tie with post fly ten. Yep. T i e w i t h. P O S T F L Y tag. Like Super one zero. Simple. That'll work for all of our materials, all of our tying tools, even the fly tying kits, like the one that Pete and I have been working out here. Uh, you can, even if you're not subscribed to the tying box, which we highly recommend, uh, you can still pick up these single use or these packs. They come with more than enough material and hooks to tie about a dozen. A uh, dozen flies? Yep. You yep. get a dozen hooks, and the materials usually go past the dozen. So if you pick up more hooks, you can continue tying with that kit. Yep. So, so even if you're just trying to learn, this is a great opportunity. Uh, we're going to be running this pretty much for forever now. Yep. And you can learn to tie along with us. Like, this was a new pattern for me. Uh, I love learning new stuff, uh, trying out new patterns, figuring out new patterns. Um, sometimes half the battle is just figuring out what those trout haven't, haven't seen before. Um, I'm a big proponent that I think trout eat mostly out of curiosity and less out of intent. Mm. The only way they know how to figure out what that thing in the water is is to put it in their mouth. So it's like stocked fish. They eat that's, everything that's before they become picky. It's stocking season, baby. 
<laughs> also, if you have any suggestions, this is our trial run first whack at the tie with us program. So let us know in email what you think, what we could have done better. Um, where yep. you want to see what you want to see more of. Yep. Um, if you think I'm really bad at this, you know, let me know. We'll get, no, you'll be stuck with me. Yeah. <laughs> Next week I won't be sick, shaky and half dead. Yeah. So we're, we're super stoked to be launching this. We'll be coming to you live every Thursday at 6 PM from post fly headquarters. Uh, if you're up in new England, um, especially up in the North source D coast area, come hang out, come tie with us. You could be right across the table from us right now yep. and, and hanging out with everybody. You could be a better tire and run less too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, it'll be BYOB, but yep. come hang out, tie some flies, uh, see post fly headquarters. Yep. Um, Check out the storefront and all the good stuff in it. Hell yeah. It's fun. All right, guys. All right. Thank you for tuning in. Yep. This has been Ty with post fly episode one. Yep. We'll see you guys next week. Have a great night guys. Ooh.